There's another way that you find yourself right now all by yourself. You're watching a live stream and you're watching by yourself and you feel empty because you're by yourself. And you're saying, well, I'm not in the building. I'm not, I don't have anybody around me. So how do I get in his presence? The Bible tells us that Jesus is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. Ah. So if you don't have anybody else that can take you into the presence of the Lord, you can go through the way, the truth, and the life. You can go there through Jesus right now. All you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. Ah. And he'll usher you. With the angels of heaven, they are usher you into his presence. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, Jesus right now can usher you into the presence of the Lord. Where there is fullness of joy. See, you might, you might right now don't feel joyful. You might feel discouraged, down, hot, sick in your body, finances is all in chaos, unemployed, broken relationships, family issues. But I came out today to tell you that in this presence, where the enemy right now is trying to keep you out of, see, somebody need to hear us tonight. The enemy right now is trying to keep you from getting into the presence because you got to know one thing about the enemy. He wasn't always an enemy. See, before he became an enemy, he was an ally of God. Before he fell, he was right there with God. And so he knows what's in God's presence. He knows what happens when we get in the presence of God because he was right there. And so now that he is a, is, is, is peaked out of heaven and he'll never be able to experience what he experienced when he was there in his rightful place. He tried to do everything he can possible to keep each one of you from experiencing what he once had. So on this morning you may be battling against the demonic forces that are sent to attack you today to keep you out of his presence right where you're at. The enemy is trying to attack and bombard you with thoughts and of giving up and quitting and, 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 and the day of the church don't work. And I'm all by myself and you don't know uh, my pain, you don't know my financial situation, you don't know my family situation. But I want to tell you now that the devil is alive because there is help. And this help is found in none other than Jesus the Christ. And the enemy knows that. He knows if you would just press your way in your head to his presence. If you would just press your way through the crowd, like the woman with the issue of blood. If you would just press your way down, and you have to do it through praise, and just enter into his presence and feel the fullness of joy, it's available to everyone who press their way on this morning. See, I know all about it. So this is for somebody watching right now. And you say, Pastor, you just don't understand. And, and, and a lot of times you think that because of, uh, of my position, because of the title that's in front of my name, that I don't experience pain. Sometimes you don't think that because I got that title, in front of my name and, and I'm associated with a church and we have a building, you think that there's no struggles. So sometimes we as pastors, we are overlooked and we are made to be invisible and we are placed on a high pedestal and, and folks tend to think that we don't have any struggles. But I want to tell you today, that you are looking at a miracle on this planet. I want to tell you today that you are looking at a man, you are looking at a man who understands fully what you may be experiencing right now and can tell you from a good place that in his presence is the fullness of joy. You see, what, what you may not know is you see him live and vibrant and, and, and you're looking at him and you're saying he's full of joy and, and nothing ever goes wrong. I just want to take a minute just to let you into my life and then I'm going to back out of it because I don't want to 
who you are now for. But I want you to see that I'm human like you. But I want you to see that I believe with all my heart what the Word of God says. And despite my situation, despite my circumstances, I trust God. You're looking at a man who has a step that's 24 hours. Looking at a man who has a step that's 24 hours. You're looking at a man who's looking right back at you. You're looking at a man that is looking at you right now. That haven't slept in 24 hours. You're looking at a man that's looking right at you, a human. Not a title, but you're looking at a man who just got home from the grocery store, 430 in the corner. You're looking at a man who's laid down in pain that hasn't been to sleep yet. But I still trust God. I still believe, despite what the enemy is trying to tell me, despite what I'm hearing in my ears from the enemy saying, You are the twist. You need to give up, man. You're not going to be able to do the things that you used to do. Won't you just face the fact that, man, you're a handicapped, and won't you face the fact that you, that Dr. Skillin and all this stuff don't work, man, and you keep having these issues, you're in and out of the ER. Won't you just give up, man? When are you going to get tight? I declare to the enemy right. this morning that I was laying down. See, sometimes you got to remind yourself, I'm all in my message before I even get started. Sometimes you got to talk to you, and you got to tell you what's going to be and what's not going to be. And so as I laid in the bed this morning thinking about all the days of gender and what all awaits me within hours, let me tell you, I reminded myself on how good God has been in time past. I reminded myself that, see, I don't been here before, you know? I reminded the devil that I don't been here before. You ain't talking to a newbie. I don't been laying on the, on, on the bed of a Christian before. And every time my God showed up, he never failed me. And he never will. Even if I don't go to sleep, I still declare that I serve the Lord. Yeah. I declare to the end, I said, let me and you pray to get some things straight right now so that maybe you'll find somebody else to take with. And I don't want to waste your time, but you definitely ain't going to waste mine. So I had to tell the enemy to land on my back of a place and see, some people think that I don't understand what you're going through. You don't understand my story. You don't understand my pain. But see, I trust in what I preach. Yes. I don't just preach it to preach it. I don't know where the name Christian is to wear it because it's popular or it's something to do or it's a bad. I believe every word of the Bible. And you know, and, and just because you don't see me crying up and you don't see me on Facebook with posted up or being in the ER and, and wanting people to pray for me, pray for me, I'm sick, I'm going through. Just because I don't post it don't mean it ain't happening. But I've learned something. I've learned how to tell the enemy that come hell, come high waters, I will serve the Lord until I die. I've learned to live a life. I learned how to live a life that pleases God, that I don't fear death. See, I don't, I don't fear death no more. Because I've allowed God to use me to touch people in so many ways and work in me and, and do the things He called me to do. That hey man, with pain and all this stuff come, tell fear death no more because I led a life that God is pleased with. And I wait for the day. I anticipate the day that He'll say, Well done. My good and faithful servant. So see, the enemy can't rob me of my joy thinking that I'm a dying in this situation. Because the even when I pass on this side, I live on the other side. Because he lives. 
So I want to encourage someone watching me today that say, I don't understand. I, I, I totally get it. And I want you to understand something. That I'm going to lead by example. Hoping that you will follow my example. Hoping that you will walk in, in what I'm telling you today. Because I'm telling you, it, it's only by divine grace that I'm standing here today. With pain shooting down my leg right now. With the nerve in my back pitch. Pain is shooting down. It's only by the grace of God I'm standing. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on. I bless the name. I bless the Lord on my soul. Come on, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Yes. 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 The enemy wants you to curse God. The enemy wants you to get mad at God. The enemy wants you to, to turn from God. Yes. I've learned a long time ago to turn to him, not from him. Yes. Yes. And I pray that you do the same. I welcome each of you that's watching us live. I'm Pastor Kevin L. Jones for Two Churches Set Free Ministry, 6212 Shakespeare Road. Columbia, South Carolina, 29203. Our church phone number, the phones are open. If you need to call for prayer, you need a word of encouragement, we are ready. The phone number is 803 447 3054. Church phone is open, church line is open. You can give us a call if you need prayer. He's going to talk to you to help walk you through this. Amen. Those that are viewing right here in Columbia, South Carolina, God bless each of you. I want all the two church members to know that you're watching now that I love you guys. I'm going to miss you guys. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 I'm praying every day for you. I believe in God is still going to be God no matter where we're at, whether we're in this building or whether we're watching it live face on Facebook. I just believe God is still letting there was a true church that set free ministry. So I want y'all guys to be encouraged and know this that your pastor is praying for you. Know this that your pastor loves you dearly. But I love you, I love you enough to keep you safe. I love you enough not to put you in harm's way. And right now, I just don't feel in my spirit. I don't feel God is telling me to bring you back in just yet. I don't hear no. I just hear not yet. So I don't hear no. I just don't. I, I just don't hear. I hear not yet right now. So I want you guys to know that we're watching. Those that are, are members of this great church that God has established. To keep the faith. We're coming back. So the very so we're coming back. But I'm gonna do it safely and responsibly. And I'm gonna do it in decency and in order. Amen. So bring our strength too as I give to God as we navigate into this. Because trust and believe we're coming back. But we never left because if we stay in contact with each other, we continue to watch the feeds every Sunday at 9 a.m. for children's service. We continue to watch the service at, at 10 o'clock. God is here, God, whether you were inside of the full walls or whether you were watching the live stream right there on your own home. We still have the same fellowship until we see each other again. And also on Thursdays, I encourage you, I encourage all of you, especially those that are part of the true church family, I encourage you to call in on Thursdays to the pastor chat. I love to talk with you. I want to talk with you. We have a great time on the line. I want to hear from you. I want to know how your week been. What have you been up to? What's been going on with you? So call in to the chat line on Thursdays for the pastor chat at 6 p.m. Guys, I miss you guys. I miss hearing your voice. Call me and tell me all what's going on with you, how you doing, and everything out in the family. You can do that every Thursday out there from 6 to 645. The pastor's line is open. Call me. The church number, we have a conference line that everybody comes on. You get to hear all your other brothers and sisters. Y'all get to talk a little bit. We all get to talk. It's a great way to keep in contact. The enemy wants to separate the body of Christ. 
Let's not give him that offer. Let's not give him that place, man. But let's call in. Let's stop what we're doing in the busy business of our day. I know everybody got schedules and busy, but listen, make some time for the family. The family that prays together well. Praise together. Praise together. Come on the line and let's call Thursday at 6 or 10 o'clock. And then join me again at 7 o'clock. Live on Facebook for the Word. It's always there. You can get it any time. And I want to encourage all our members, take advantage of our YouTube channel. It's for you. It's for you. It's for you. True Church SC, South Carolina, abbreviated. True Church SC. Go on the YouTube channel. It's a posted video from maybe when we first started five years ago to now. And there is a word that's there that's alive with you and mine. So you can have the word anytime, anywhere. And in this day we're living in, a lot of technology, I'm sure everybody is, is going to sadly enough to make it to YouTube. I don't think you can mess up on You may get go, go wrong on the YouTube, I don't think. That's about one of the first things I learned. It's how to get on YouTube, and I'm sure all of you got to get on that. So I encourage you to go there and watch this as well. Anytime, anywhere, man, you can, you can get the word from there. For those that are doing us, that are outside of the true church family, we welcome you. Come on, let's welcome our guests. Let's welcome our guests and our own guests that are joining us on the day of the day. We decided to work with us on today. God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you on today. And we have people that are watching from not just the state of South Carolina, but from several different states. You call me in and text me and let me know that you've heard the word and and how much the word is needed to you. So God bless you to all of those that are watching us all across the world today. God bless you. We don't count that um, as a small thing, but we are honored to have you um, flowers into your home or wherever you're watching us there. So I want you to go ahead and tag a friend right now. So God has a word for us on today that I promise you will be a blessing to you. We go ahead and tag somebody in. Go ahead and let somebody know that the word of God is going to come for us. And they don't want to miss it. So get, let me give you a few minutes to just go ahead and start tagging everybody you can and tell them the word, man. You got to get the word today. You want to not miss this one. This one right here, yeah, it, it was all going. It's an all going word because, like, five, I told you I was up 24 hours. I was never getting it. This word has been all going. And I had this word a couple days ago. Not knowing that last night I was going to actually be living it. And that word helped hear me as I had to ride on the highway. And I understand it because you know the restrictions that you have with this virus. I understand it. That's why I ask all of you to get knowledge of it. So that when things happen, you don't go into depression. See, I understood nobody can go with it. I understood the severity of the virus that people would go. I, I trust and believe that if I had made phone calls, and said, hey, I need to get to the hospital. I would have had a caravan and a police escort there. But it's, it's not that world of it right now. And I knew that because of researching and studying, I understood the, 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 the severity of the thing, and that I don't have to take that trip by myself. I didn't let the enemy play with me and say, oh, you're by yourself. No one cares about you. Oh, you die. All of that stuff that some of you allow the enemy to get into your mind. You got to understand the times that we are in and the situation. It ain't like nobody won't be in this case. Right. So if this word was tearing me up 20 to 26 and I was going by myself 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, I think from one, going up the road, making it to the hospital, blocking everything the enemy was trying to throw at me. The word of God helped me, man, when I sat in that, that, that empty um, ER weight room. Yes. The word helped me when I was put in the room and had to sit and wait. The word helped me as I had to interact with the God and the imagine and pulling and, 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 and sticking and poking. The word helped me when they discharged me and now I got to go out and try to make it back down the highway. I'm, I'm medicated, highly medicated. The word kept me and I came down the highway 4.30 in the morning and said, God, you got to drive because I'm 
feel it effect of it that I need to make it home. But God reminded me in the midst of riding four or thirty in the morning, heading back home. He said, Don't you remember something? He said, Don't you remember that I tried to think it? I said, Oh yeah, I do. He said, I can remember four o'clock in the four thirty in the morning like this. You was riding with no license. No money. Car on me. High as you can get. Drunk as you can get. Just as lost as you ever was. But God. And I just come in. I just need you back in the city and say, God, you got me. And I just start praising you. Because the enemy wanted to try to get there. You find yourself coming home now. But God reminded me, he said, you've been out here, they didn't like grass, they didn't like by yourself. Yeah. And you ain't got nothing about it. Yeah. He said, you ain't even know then. While you was riding in those conditions, you wasn't alone. Because back then I was with you. Yeah. Somebody need to hear that. Back then he was with you. That's why you're here now. No matter what the circumstances are today, you're here because he's with you then. And he reminded me, he said, when I was with you then, and you were way to the left. He said, I'm with you more now, I'm with you. And I just said, take me on home, Lord. Take me on home. Give yeah, the word for us now on Psalms 103 today. Just turn with me to you in your Bible to Psalms 103, verses 1 and 2. God has a word for us on today. And I tell you, it's a blessing. I pray now that you just get seated. I know that we are watching the comfort of our home and that can be challenging at times because I got a bishop that I follow and he's been pointing to me and I know it's a, it's a challenge of watching it from home because you got the luxury of getting up and going to the refrigerator and going by the stove and you got the luxury of peeping out the door and getting distracted and before you know it, you know, got all about the word on. You got a lot of distraction on you be laying in that bed, so I'm gonna just lay it right here and I'm gonna watch it. And you wake up three hours later. And you up on Amen. So I know the distraction that can come with being at home. And that's where working from home and all. We get a little too confident on working from home with Casey. <laughs> and Netflix and all kinds of stuff, y'all. You ain't watch no music or whatever. Netflix down and all outside and all kinds of stuff. Amen. When I worked at home before, I thought I'd be way down the street. <laughs> far as I far as the cold is going to take me. But I was having a phone call, so I knew the rain was on the phone. It was about three hours before I started getting in. So I think three hours down the street. <laughs> Amen. All right. The phone ran. I was right back out. I was right out the street. And you know you ain't going to do right now. Amen. So we want you to... Be, be, be get focused in because the enemy would like for you to not get this word on today and I want to do my very best to keep you focused. Somebody say focus. Focus. Life. 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 Somebody Life. say focus. Focus. Life. 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 Amen. Focus life. I want to keep you focused so that you will hear from God today because he got a word right where you're at. And this word, if you will receive it, it will change your life. And I'm telling you, I dealt with this Three or four days ago, studying it and reading it and saying, God, this is good. And where you going with this? And then by myself, one of my other one headed to the ER, full of pain, and said, I see what you were saying three days ago. How awesome are you, God, that you knew three days ago? You knew way before then, but three days ago, you tried to prepare me for what was going to happen. And God, oh, you were good. And now I need this word because right now I'm under attack. Right now, my body is hurt, my mind is supposed to rest because the enemy is trying to plant different thoughts that are contrary to your word. And the Bible tells us we learned it last week to take every thought and bring it captive to the obedience of Christ. And so that's a battle in itself. And you have to learn that when you're going through your most difficult time, the battle gets tense. You have to learn that when you're in the heat of the battle, the mind is the battlefield. That's where the enemy wages war in your mind. And you got to be able to fight mentally. You can't have a mental breakdown in the midst of a crisis. Because the enemy, if he can get you to not think, 
he can get you to start making crazy and foolish decisions that will turn out to be detrimental to your progress. You got to know how to mentally stay focused. You got to learn how to mentally keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your mind centered around the promise of God. And it takes a fight sometimes because depending on the severity of the situation, it may some have to fight a little harder than others. But victory is certainly yours if you would just stay focused. Yeah. You just got to stay focused. See, some things God will do and some things you got to do. God will do his part, but he will need you to do yours. It's a two-way street. It's like you do it and God will do it. See, you do it in the natural, and then when your natural ability is at least it's later, then God will give you the super, and then it becomes super natural. Come on, somebody. He'll put his super on your natural and make that what was impossible become what? Possible. I'm preaching better than y'all can. Amen right now. Somebody need to hear that, but you got to what? Stay focused. Tell somebody, focus. Life. I'm living a focused life. I'm living a focused life. Amen. You got to be focused. You got to keep your eyes on Christ. You're going to keep your eyes on the prize, but you need to keep your eyes on the, on the person who gives the prize. You don't just look for the blessing. You better look at the blessing. See, that's the world way. We got to get out of that. We're going to go talk the world quick. Keep your eyes on the prize. It's said from the pulpit, so it sounds like it's coming from, from the word of God. It sounds spiritual, but that's still a, a worthy um, phrase. You better keep your eyes on Christ. You better keep your eyes on Jesus. He ain't no prize. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. See, a prize. Come on, John. I feel like that right now. See, a prize can be won. See, a prize can be won. But salvation is given. See, Jesus ain't no prize. So don't let the world tell you about keep your eyes on the prize and make you think that spiritual. He ain't no prize. You can't win him. He was given. He ain't no prize. Jesus was a gift. My God, Jesus was a gift, not a prize. So you let the world keep their eyes on the prize. You keep your eyes on Jesus. For the prize may walk. A prize may talk. A prize may heal. A prize may deliver. A prize may provide. On and on and on and on. Prize is way off. That's why. You ever want a prize? Where is that now? Where are they now? Where have they come for you lately? Come on, Captain. Where have they done for you lately? Amen. A prize. Jesus is a gift. And see, when you understand that you didn't deserve that gift, it makes you appreciate more of that gift. See, we need to be appreciative of Jesus because he is a gift that was given that didn't have to be given. Something else would have came. We had the prize from us. Called uh, our judgment. <laughs> and we had a prize from it. A prize of eternal life, eternal damnation in hell. We had a prize. A lot of us earned our prizes. Right, right. But instead of the prize, Jesus gave the gift. Come on, somebody need to hear that today. No matter what all you're going through, you did. Understand that you might have earned what's coming. But Jesus is a gift that you didn't deserve that to be yours today. I thank God for the gift and not your own prize. I thank God for the gift. I thank God for the gift. And not the prize. Amen. The Bible says you reap what you sow. Amen. So you know what you put, you know what the prize was. Don't, don't fool yourself now. You know what you're gonna put now. You know what's coming back. Come on now. Come on, you haven't been out in that world. You drug people that you did. You know it's coming. One day soon it's catching up with you. And then you get money. No, how about that? Amen. Harvest time. Somebody read the harvest is right now. Harvest time. But if you look at one Psalm 103, verse 1 and 2, God has a word from you from the song that says, This song was written by David. Everybody's familiar with David. He wrote a lot of the songs and they really was doing periods of time in his life when he was having challenges and, and, and he wrote songs to display what God meant to him in those times. And right here in Psalm 103, you just look at the first two verses with me. I'm reading from the New King James Version, which says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, 
and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Amen. Forget not all his benefits. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. We thank you for your presence. Lord. You said where two or three gather, there you are in our midst. So right now, Father God, we stand before the Holy God. We have heard that you forgive us of our sins and burdens, Lord, and in peace. God, we pray that the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness right now. Because that's what the perfect none of us are uh, flawless. But we are the perfect Savior. Thank Jesus the Christ. And to him we look to every day. We look to him and his righteousness. And we thank you for that gift that you've given us through him. To give us salvation of the Lord and all those who believe. So we thank you right now, God, that we honor you in our midst because you are worthy to be praised. Despite my circumstances right now, God, you are still worthy. Worthy to be praised. We bless your name and ask you for the woman finally in the midst of us. Not only in here, but everyone that's watching right now, Lord. They need you in their own way right now. And I'm praying that you would manifest yourself in that way which is needed. Because God will justify all their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There is nothing too hard for you. So I pray that you are comfortable right now. That you listening to me and watching by Facebook Live, God, that you are confident in them, that you will speak to their heart and let them know that no matter what the circumstance is, no matter what the situation is, there's nothing too hard for you. Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way as we listen for the word of God and our first entirety and truth. We thank you now for whether or not this once again, and we praise your name. We thank you now, Father, for our confidence all those who need comfort right now in our own protective way. Seek in the hospital, man. Right? Lock the little ones on today. God, you are able. And we thank you now. And we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we do thank you and praise you. God, the Lord, say amen. 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 As we begin. Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2 says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none. Somebody say none. none. Of his benefits. Amen. If you need to shut it for the name, God will lay it on heart early this morning. He said, Tell the people that they are the God to recite because we are people that like to recite stuff a lot. We like to say what other people are saying or something that is catching. But sometimes that you say catching, it sounds good, but it means nothing. Right. Oh, right. Sometimes that we're saying, don't have no problem in it. We just say it because it sounds good. Right. Right. But it ain't got nothing in it. That's like nine o'clock. It's with, with everything on for some reason. Right. Come on now. You can miss it in your yard. You can buy it. You can go and buy the type of car they is. You can go get a, 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 a Rolls Royce. And you can put it out in front of your house with all the fixes on it. But if it ain't got no engine, it's just, just going to sit there and look good. Yeah. But it ain't going to get you nowhere. And a lot of these sayings that we're saying, they look good and they sound good. It sounds so good. But they have no power to perform. But God said, and he wants you to say this today. God wants you to say this today. I'm a child of God with them things. Come on, somebody. I'm a child of God with benefits. You got to be able to tell the enemy that your friends, your family, your phone, your neighbor, your cat, and your dog. I am a child of God with benefits. So you got to be able to tell somebody that they have right about You got to know that though. You got to know that you're a child of God with what? Benefits. And what is benefits? And, and, and you know, we all in some way aspects need to understand the importance of benefits. Young man, you need to definitely know benefits. Yes. You don't better watch me, you got to understand benefits. Yes. And benefits sometimes can be a payment or gift as one is made to help. Something that is, is to be a helping, a plus, or a bonus. Benefits. 
They're not something that you earn, they're more like it. <laughs> and, and if you know like I know, um, having benefits in society is everything. Especially now. Especially when we are in a pandemic, you need benefits. Yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. You need the medical benefits of, yeah. of life insurance yeah. benefits. You need a job. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You need a job yeah. with benefits. Yeah. I think we all understand now. Some of us who've been telling around with this job and that job. I think by right now, in the pandemic age, brought you that down. They should have brought you that one thing for certain. They would all have been said and done. You better get a job with what? Benefits. Amen. And, and now, you know, people want this type of time. You should desire even young people. You need to start now and all the folks teach your children how to, how to work and, and design a job to have benefits. Tell them the importance of getting jobs and have benefits. It's okay when you start out and you're working for the first time and you need to get through, you need to get back that you get, you know, a job and it may not have any benefits. A scholar job is okay, it's all right. But you don't want to find yourself trying to raise a family with a scholar job. Come on, somebody. You don't want to try to, try to take a scholar job and try to have wrong people deal. That ain't gonna work. A scholar job is when you still stand with your parents and they, they paying everything and all you're doing is just put your little money in safety and buy your little food and, and, and shoes every now and then. See, that, that's not a job as well. But well, that's not a job on pay car papers. Come on, somebody. That's not a job on pay rent or mortgage. They don't pay the light bill or cable bill. They better than pay cell phone bill. So, and that's not a job. That when it comes to my kids, don't get you no um, get you no time of day. Don't get you no time of day. You ain't get no time of day. It's not a lot of kids with a scholar job. They show the value of what a scholar job is. You got a scholar job, you better keep trying. You got a scholar job, you got to hire my kids, boys or girls. They pay you quick, but a scholar job, what they gonna do? You ain't got enough for me and you. Come on, somebody. My kids are gonna walk in there, buddy. If you have a scholar job around the house, that means that somebody will come on the shop. And if you have a scholar job, you know, look, because when you have a scholar job, it's a lot of work and what? And pay. So you ain't too afraid to give up that money when you have a scholar job, because you be there by how hard you had to work to get that couple dollars. So you can try to skip and pay that pay and hum the ball to somebody. But you won't skip, pay that pay and hum the ball to another man, because they already recognize scholar job. They recognize you as a woman with scholar jobs. No, okay, you just keep working till you, um, till you upgrade. Then you come back. You keep with upgrade. You find what you better upgrade. Come on, somebody. Come on, you better tell people. You find and all that. You keep the thing going on, but you better upgrade. You got to come up with a little bit more than that, buddy. Because they ain't paying no kind of rent. We going in upside now. We going in to get put out. We going in. You got to upgrade. We need some help in the life insurance. You got to have somebody that can be able to have some benefits. Just in case if you're on the low end of it, you better have somebody that got to be on the high end that can cover you. See, I, I'm on that low end, but I can give you a wife that has some benefits. Come on, somebody. That ain't nothing we can go with it. But I'm trying to tell you that you got to understand you got to have some benefits. Amen. I bring some benefits to the table too now. Don't get me wrong now. Hey, ain't no good a one way street, is it? I got to take up for myself now. I got to get a knock on the benefits too. Hey now. All right, there you go. When you're talking about a job, you're talking about health and life insurance. That's right. You're looking for the type of job that pays vacation. You know, uh, benefits, man. Because you, 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 you know, I don't work in, in several jobs because of my background with allow me at one time and I didn't know the Lord and know that favor is greater and, 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 and that the gift will make room for you and you pray to go great people when I'm just out there trying to make my own way and doing it against all the purpose called feminine 
I really didn't get the best job because of my record and because of the challenges I faced. I had to take what I could. And most of the things I took what I could, working all day, paying a little bit of nothing, with no benefits, no retirement, no paid vacation. If you don't go to work, you don't get paid. Yeah. See, you ain't no problem there. You call me, you just don't get paid. And see, now you got to have a job nowadays, you need more with benefits. Yeah. You got to have a job where if you don't come to work, that you still get paid if there's a legitimate reason why you can't come. That's called benefits. Yeah. You want paid sick days, paid vacation days. You want to be able to work all that time. You want to be able to take your week off and then get paid. But even if you don't go anywhere, you should right. still get paid to not go nowhere. That's a job of what? Benefits. You, if you get a good job, you, 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 push, you know, you push yourself and, and you apply yourself. You may even get a job that comes with how many dollars? That's a what? Benefits. You ain't got to drive your own. You get a job in post the market, you gonna get a um, one of them command, you ain't got to be just try that. You know? You get your job and you get a little nice company car. Benefit. You ain't got to ever drive the car, you try that. And you get free gas, you get a gas car to come with it. That's what? Benefit. And some of us, some of us, you know, like I said, you gotta apply yourself, man. Don't settle for anything. Some of y'all check them out before you put in the application. A lot of times we just put in the application because we, we get desperate because we get behind. And I understand, I don't get desperate. I know I need to just jump up in anything. I can tell you now, I jumped up in the job one day. Let me just be totally honest with you. I ain't mad. I don't think 30 minutes. I took a job and I said, I'm just need anything. And I just want to work. I want to try to help out. I got that. He told me, you can catch all kinds of diseases and you get wet. And, and, and you got to deal with live perfect and the perfect or, or do all kinds of stuff to you. And one of the acting the world people like you were telling me. I said, you know what? I'm going to the bathroom. They said, you ain't quit now. I said, nah, not yet. So I got to the bathroom, I'm with you. And I went to the bathroom and I, I went through the break room and I put all that stuff and I got one down the street and all my clothes on and he got me to the end of the show.
bomb, and you know, they got a house, you know, they got the ass bomb, and, and all the head gear and all the stuff to go with it, you know. So, you know, they can be, it can work all kinds of ways that you can have a friend with benefits. And, and it ain't always wrong to have friends with benefits. Because I've learned this. I take some friends with benefits while I take some with them. Because I've known the wrong saying that is so true. You hang with nine broke friends, you bound to be the simple. Amen. So, you need some friends. You need one friend with benefits instead of nine broke. Any day. So you gotta understand that. And in the text, if you look at it, David calls upon his soul. His soul. That's the his immortal nature, which he defines as all that is within me. He's calling on everything that's in me. He's talking to himself and saying, um, bless the holy name of God. He's telling himself that. All of himself. Bless. The holy name of God. And by doing this, David is stirring up that his inner self self to what? Magnify the Lord. When you magnify the Lord, you know what that entails, right? When you magnify the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Magnify the Lord with me. You know what you got to understand what that means. That means making me. That's good. Because you ever look at a magnifying glass? You know what it does? It makes whatever you're looking at appear bigger than it actually is. And see, that's what you got to do. He, when he said, bless the Lord, he tells you to magnify the Lord. Make the Lord bigger than what you're going through. Right, right. See, you can't make what you're going through bigger than God is making me. Right. And, and, and how do you make things that you're going through bigger than God? You talk about that when you talk about God. When you talk about what you're going through more than you talk about what God can do, you are making the problem bigger than God. You are magnifying it over God instead of magnifying God over it. And that's why right. no results are happening. And you're frustrated, you're angry, you're feeling defeated, but you'll defeat yourself because you're doing it in reverse. You're doing the living life in reverse. We talked about this years ago. You need to go back to the true church. As he uh, looked at it on YouTube, we got a whole series called Living in Reverse. And that thing was teaching, and teaching you about some stuff you've been taught. You've been taught how to not um, succeed. You know, sometimes growing up in your upbringing can teach you how to live a defeated life, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it because you you you, you don't know that about it. Because you watch everybody in your family not succeed, and then they teach you the blueprint on what how to not succeed. So you are trying to get ahead, but you're trying to go forward with it in reverse. You and I just hear. Once a while you and then you hit everything in the back, but when you look at that, you still trying to force your way forward in reverse. And you just hit everything, you just hit everything, hit everything, and you wonder why you can keep back in the stuff, back in the stuff, back in the stuff, but you try to go forward, but you still in reverse. You try to go forward, you in reverse. You got to learn how to put it in and drive and move forward. That's a, that's a focus. Somebody say, stay. Focus. 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 Fire. Fire. focus. That's focus. That's the whole principle behind my closing line is to teach you and teach myself about myself. I got to keep looking forward. I got to stay focused. I can't let you put me back in reverse. Because if I go back in reverse, I'm going to back up into some stuff. I'm going to move forward again into some stuff. I can't go into my future or um, back up into my past. All of that. Come on, somebody. Y'all still want that? And if you know anything about David, if you follow David, and most of us have, but David is a very interesting man of God. So if you follow him, you know that David often had to bless the Lord during difficult periods in the Bible. It was a difficult period where he pinned a lot of these songs. He pinned it in the midst of trials. He pinned most of these songs in the midst of tribulation and storm. That's what makes it so personal. And makes it so relevant to us is David wrote out of pain and, and he taught us, if you look in the Bible, you will find that David taught us how to navigate in life during difficult times. He took his own life and put it out in the Bible in a song to let you see. This is how you get the victory in the midst of chaos. Yes. Let me give you a scripture to go to. In first Samuel chapter 17, if you just write that down, I'm going to jot you some verses there. For the sake of time, I'm going to jot you some verses, but first Samuel chapter 17, if you just write that down, when you get in the time, I want you to look at it. 
Read that chapter. You're going to see some stuff. But first Samuel chapter 17, if you remember that chapter, that was when David was facing the giant called Goliath. And in verse 37, David said, the Lord, look what he told him. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear, he will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. David looked at him in his face and told him, the Lord that rescued me from the hand of the lion and the paw of the bear, that God, that same one that rescued me then, is the same one that is going to rescue me now. And you need to be able to look back at where God has brought you from uh -huh. and, and remember the same God that brought you across that bridge before is the same God that will get you across this bridge. Yeah. Why? Because you should know by now that he promised that he never changed. He never wavered. He's the same God today, yesterday, today, and what? Forever. So you can count on God to be faithful. You can count on God to be trustworthy. You can count on him to bring you through. Your faith may be wavering, but God never wavers for faith. He is sorry. He said that I'm doing And you got to, if you got that to depend on when you're going through crisis, you got that alone to depend on. They can look back when facing the time. He looked back and remember, God God don't brought me through before. I'm going to be a man that's different tests, and you might not let the test throw you off. Right. So you may be a different test this time for you, but it's still the same God. Yes, sir. Already remember that. Maybe a different test. Maybe a different city. Maybe a different town. Maybe a different person. Maybe a different job. But whatever it is, maybe a different sickness. Whatever. It's still the same God right, right. that can deliver you. He don't change because your situation changes. The enemy comes with different ways of attacking you, but God is still the same. He remains faithful. And then he reminded himself of how faithful God was while he right now in the heat of battle. He said it for a giant that's going to kill him if he, if he ain't careful. He said it facing a man that's over seven feet tall that's going to beat the break off of him if he ain't careful. And in the midst of, of just feet away, from the enemy, put his hand on him. He declared, God got me. Yes. Can you stand in the midst? It's easy to say it when you ain't when you ain't there yet. It's easy to talk to him when you're on the phone. Yes, yes. Can we not I'm gonna help God? It's easy to go on Facebook and, and, and get an answer. Right. But then you read the story, you see the first face to face. And now now we're gonna see you see the face to face that you said on Facebook. You know, Facebook, you can put all kinds of stuff on. But all what happens when you run it over in the store, or in the parking lot, or they come to your house, then what happens? Then what happens? Can you still say it? But they can show that they can say that right in his face. Yeah. You better be able to, you need to be able to look at the enemy right in his face. Yeah. And tell him what the Lord has done. Right. Let's look at this. In Boy, verse 43 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, Goliath cursed David by his gods and threatened to give David flesh to the bird and the wild animals. But David didn't get discouraged. He instead declared the mission of adversity, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin. This big old man had a sword, a spear, and a javelin. He was strapped. But David said, look at David said, but I come against you in the name of the Lord yeah. Almighty. See, you got to understand, no matter what the enemy coming at you with, how the other person died with it, all these different things you trying to attack you with, or no job, or bills do, whatever, kids acting crazy, family acting crazy, husband acting crazy, wife acting crazy, whatever is going on right now, he's coming at you with two or three or four different weapons. And you're feeling it, you're feeling like he came home. He came to me with three or four different weapons last night. What are they gonna do about this? How are you gonna run the company? How are you gonna make this? What are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? He comes with all these weapons um, to try to discourage me, to try to get me to be in fear. But when he came with the weapons, even though I didn't have any physical weapons like that, I had the name of the Lord. And I heard from the Bible that the name of the Lord is a strong power. And those that are running through it are saved. I ran into the name of the Lord last night. My strong power 
And I was. You can't let the enemy trump you with the weapons. You got to be able to call on the name of the Lord and, and know that that's good enough. That's all you need. See, sometimes we want, we do too much. You ain't got to convince him. He know what the name of the Lord will do. Sometimes we try to be convinced and we try to convince people. We try to convince ourselves. All we have to do is just say the name of the Lord. That's all it takes sometimes. We don't have to do all this extra stuff to try to prove how safe we are. All we have to do is be safe. And he said that you come with all these black come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have devoured. He said that you have devoured him, whom you have devoured. You ain't got a problem with me. You got a problem with my God. See, the battle is not mine. It is. And you better understand when you belong, y'all belong. When you belong to him, then, then you become his prop. You become his possession. And then when whatever comes against you, comes against him. And then the problem ain't yours no more. It is his. Because they attack his. If you give me something, it's mine to take care of. So if something comes against it, I in return got to defend it. So what you think is the same that we're not David understood this. And if we as children of God can understand that we belong to God and that what comes against us actually comes against God and the battle is no longer ours, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. Who have who have ever beaten our way? Who, have, who, who, who do you know in history? Name one that's ever beaten. We're awake. None. Who's more powerful than him? We wait. Nobody. We, if we get this, get it, because I do get it that we all don't get it. I do get it that we all don't get it at the same time. But what I do want you to understand is that at some point in your life, you got to get it. If you don't get it like I get it, at some point you need to get it. Ain't no excuse by, well, we don't be both human and then lonely now. I know people who've been in Christ way less than me. Way, um, I've been in, in, in this same thing many, many years. And I know people who are fresh in the Lord that can move mountains with their faith that can get stuff done and I don't think going to say for over 18 years this year, 18 years, and people, I know people who've been doing it eight months that is going up. I'm looking at one right there. So it ain't, it, it, it's what you put in. It's what you would get back out of. So you can get there. I can say I've been in the Twitter some years. That brother can say he's been doing this thing out here for eight months. But we see the progress in the eight months. Why? Because he trusts his God. That's why we know one thing. I heart God. Come on, you better know my heart God is God. Yeah. He loves God. He trusts God. And that's what you see heaven in his life. You see the fruit of his trust. Against the odds. Against the odds. And that's how we gotta be. We have to be against the odds. Say, I still trust you. I don't care what you come with at me with. I don't care how big you are, and I don't care how many questions you come with. I don't need to be a big old person, and I don't have to have a whole bunch of weapons. All I need is the name of the Lord. And that's what you need just what? Fine. He told David that. He was going to throw his body to the birds of the air. David looked at him and said, you know what? This day the Lord will deliver me in your hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. David told him, this is every day I will give the promises of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world. Somebody say the whole world. He said the whole world would know that there is a God. In Israel. Come on, somebody. When we are going through something, we should be ready to be used by God to show the whole world that, yeah, you see what I'm going through, but you watch what God do. Because God's going to get the glory. We, we should be looking for ways to let God get the glory. But when things come against us, we need to be able to focus and say, in front of the whole world, God is going to get the glory. That's why I can tell you tonight, I can step in front of the hour, and if you ever 
ever notice that about sad and pain? You already know how that feels. That's worse than childbirth. But I'm standing here today and I understand that meditation did go on. And I can get on meditation and come up in here. I wasn't going to do that. So I had to, I had to tough it out today to come up here and still deliver work. I'm letting you know and I'm letting the whole world know how good God is. Come on, somebody. You don't even know how good God is. The whole world needs to see. You need to see it from you. The whole world needs to see it from you. You need to see it from you, 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 and all of y'all. The world needs to see. They need to see us crying on the pity about it. They need to see us take the stand against the enemy and tell them, I cut your head off and finish with the consequences of the air. But the whole world would know that there is a God in Columbia. There is a God in South Carolina. There is a God in my house. There is a God in your house. Come on, somebody. We need to let the enemy know there is a God. And one twenty-eight pound on court, play with it if you want. There is a God. And since the two fail, shake their road. I don't know what other church you subscribe to, but I can promise you one thing. That two church is set free ministry, the whole world can see that there is a God. You can see the God here. You're looking at a miracle. I'm looking out. Y'all play with y'all can't see what I can see because you can't see but people that's here that are simple. They're my family here. But you can't see what I can see. I'm looking at miracles. I know each one's story. I look at them and I know that there's a God in Columbia. They tell me that there's not a God in Columbia. I'm looking at plenty of testimony on how good God is being. Anybody here know that God has been good to you? I'm looking at the good people. That God has been especially good to you. Woo! In the midst of adversity, after being threatened by the giant Goliath, David remembered the benefits of serving the Lord. David remembered that God is my protector. David remembered that God will deliver. So David blessed the Lord by declaring to the enemy what God would do in the situation. I'm saying this, instead of being discouraged because of the size of the giant Goliath, David was encouraged by the size of his God. Yes. See, David didn't get discouraged by the size of the problem. David got encouraged by the size of the problem of Solomon. Oh, y'all, get that one in the problem. David didn't get discouraged by the size of how much it costs. David didn't get discouraged by how far it is. David didn't get discouraged by he didn't have enough skills or abilities or resources. David got, David got encouraged of, because of the provider, the way maker, the miracle worker, the light in the darkness. My God, that is who he was. That is who you are. David was encouraged. Because he knew I may not have it, but I know the one who got the whole wide world in his hand. I know the one who said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. I know it. I know it. So David was encouraged during difficult times. David knew that serving the Lord comes with benefits, and that's not just when everything is going well. But when faced with trials and tribulations, when the enemy is threatened to take you out, and even when people was trying to doubt, because if you look at verse 33, Saul said to David, this is what Saul said, you are not able to go out against the Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man, and he's been a warrior from his youth. But David blessed the Lord with his soul. David blessed the Lord with everything that was in him. And all I want to, and I want to share a point of observation with you from the text that will bless you if you receive it and believe it. Don't, number one, don't forget the benefits of serving the Lord when faced with adversity. Don't forget the benefits of serving the Lord when you are faced with adversity. You face with trouble, difficulty, sicknesses. Financial problems. Don't forget the benefits of 
serving the Lord during difficult times. Don't let the enemy play with you. Don't let him rob you of what's rightfully yours, what's been freely given to you. Because David, even though he tried to talk him out of it, even though people that he came to help talk down to him, so you got to be able to pass by some stuff. We, we look at the Bible and we read different instances and we can see it going on in our world. We kind of let it fish us. You can't let these things fish you. Can't you see that David went to help them? He wasn't David for the same way he was, and the giant Goliath wasn't bothering David. He was bothering Saul and David's brother. David just had to come along to check on him and see what was going on. David said, he's going to be sad because I'm going, ah, oh, well, y'all got a problem. I'm going back to the bed and the sheep. I'm going back where it's safe now. I'm going to find a pair of my back to go do. You got so much shit all out there. Y'all can get killed. And I ain't going to see that. I'm going wrong. But see, David stood up and said, hey, hey, I don't know about them. And now, I, you know, I might not even like a whole bunch of them. But I ain't going to let you talk about my God. And see, so we got to be able to say, hey, I ain't going to, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with what God is doing. But I heard you say something about my God. And now this is where I step in there. We got to quit being so timid of people when we hear the power of our God and be able to get free and all folks. You got to be able to stand up for them. Wait a minute now. You may be saying what you're saying against them, but when it comes to my God, you're not going to defile the name of my God down in front of me. Where are those people? That we refuse to let people talk about God. We give our people to let people say all kinds of God we want to get along with them. Yeah. We one way we're going to church people. But when we get around our friends, we can turn to a whole other somebody. Come on, somebody. We can let them talk about God and talk about the people in the church and talk about the preacher and talk about everything that pertains to the kingdom. So we'll sit right there and free. Because we like them. Because we like them. We want them to like us. You can't have the most perfect world. You have to take a walk around you. You have to not be like to really be effective in the kingdom. If you want the people, they want to be me all the time. They want to have Pastor John's title. You have to have the enemy that I got. If you want my title. You, you think people like me. There's some people that like me, but there's a lot of people that hate me because I call sin, sin. Yes. I call sin, sin. So I ain't like that a lot of people. So don't think, don't want this like that if you don't want my enemies. Because a lot of people want to see me fall. Because I stand for God. I don't care who your name is. See, I just talk about in the street. So you know if I ain't scared of you, I wasn't scared of you in the street. I ain't care when they came up to my brother and son and son. You know my brother, I don't care about you. Your brother, your daddy, your mama, whoever that you claim to be, your family needs nothing to be. So now, you think I'm going to get in the kingdom? If I was like up for the devil and could have got killed doing that, you think I'm going to get in the kingdom and see you, see your name, see your title, see who you can to? None of that. I don't see that but Jesus. I'm not lying and I'm going to cry if it's going to be him. So I don't see you. I don't care about nobody. None. Zero. I don't know nobody on this earth walking. Now, stay it up. Y'all ain't getting the young women like, oh, he's going to stop. No, y'all get that. You ain't gonna talk about God to me. I don't care how big you is, bad you is, how whoever you're supposed to be, how much love you got. I don't care about none of that. None of that. None of that. I came down to the loud fact that they try to pour into the church when they start going against the name of God. I don't get to keep their money and don't try to get out of my office and pull them out and pull the check off. Right in my office. Your father and your wife got to keep your money. You, 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 you don't, you don't give as much as you pay. Pay your money and you perish. And there, and there you go. Out the door. I'm being this way to tell them to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but David, he stood up when he was trying to help people. And so part one, you got to not forget the benefits of God of serving the Lord, even when you pray to the person. Even when people that you're trying to help talk about. You got to remember there's benefits in serving the Lord. When the situation is bigger than you, you got to remember that God is bigger than the situation. And still not back down. When the situation threatens you, then give your body to like you told me, I give your body 
to the burden of their hair. He told David, I'll cut you into pieces. He looked at David and said, man, don't you go around and do you? And David still stood. You can't let the enemy bully you and tell you what he's going to do to you. When you know who you are in Christ, you know he walks around like a what? Roaring light. It says light one. And he said he was one. Right. <laughs> it says light one. And he said he was one. Right. Said the devil roam around like a roaring lion. Never said he was a lion. Right. There's a difference between the acting like a lion and being a lion. That's not the end of the street. There's a difference between trying to act like a fellow and really going. Right. You act like one when you mean one. And when you mean one, you would think you won't act one.
We do it like it is then. We didn't believe that he was going to do it. You should be shocked with God. You should have been here a little while. If you have been in, in, in prison a little while, you should be shocked every time you bless you. So that's what he do. You should be shocked every time you make a way because that's what he do. You should be shocked every time you hear you because that's what he do. You sound like a brand new. And you spend so much time doing that, you forgot you still got an enemy. That takes you with high over here. Yep. <laughs> Where that come from? Yeah. yeah. Catch me with catch me. You're not just gonna catch me with man now. Yeah. Catch me with the man now. Come on, my man. So this is what happened. Then them came back and the city was burnt to the ground. They were burnt. And the Bible says that the men, because of what they had came back to, they wanted to stone them. Listen to the same people that were just partying with them. Same people that just fought side by side with them. How they want to kill them. I'm saying these men fought with them. They were a part of his team. And now because of trouble, they have allowed their soul to be filled with sorrow. Right. To the point they consider killing their leader. So the Bible says that they are so weak. Read that verse 6. I'm going to read I'm trying to see that verse now. I'm going to see verse 6. It says, they spoke of strong David because the soul of all the people was what? Grieved or disturbed. The what of the people? The what? The soul. Brother David said, Bless the Lord, oh my what? Soul. But they allowed their soul to be greedy. They allowed their soul to be filled with so much sorrow that it turned into anger and rage. And see, if you allow your soul, the innermost part of you, your emotions, your mental capacity to think, you allow your soul to become so disturbed that it gets worked up, you would do things that you never thought that you would do. You would turn on people you never thought you would turn on. Because you've been consumed now by sorrow. And they had became consumed by what well, well, how they became so consumed they turned into we're gonna kill you. And this is what I'm saying. This is how this is how it puts us in a bad place. They said, we're going to kill you, right? Because their hearts were so full of sorrow, they said, we're going to kill you, David. Not realizing or not caring that not only are your wife gone and your children gone and your house burned down, but don't you see my eyes being spoken? Don't you see my kids gone? Don't you see um, my wife gone too? They were so consumed with sorrow that it turned into rage and anger that they didn't realize they wanted to kill somebody who stuck on too. That's why black on black crime is so terrible. Yes. Because you're killing people who ain't got nothing like you. But you can't see that they don't have nothing like you. You can't see that their neighborhood is not no better than your neighborhood because you're so consumed with sorrow that it will turn into rage that you turn it on people who don't have it like you. They shut them on too. They broke too. They live in a bad neighborhood too. Yes. Sorrow in the soul can make you make crazy decisions. Understand that. They became feel. And instead of now, but see, they did the, 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 the reverse. They, they were full of sorrow in their soul. But instead of falling and allowing his soul to be the super sorrow like everyone else, David said to his soul, David said to himself, even though everybody else was allowing the sorrow, the grief, or what they were going through to um, consume them in their soul to the point they started thinking more, the grief and the anger and the sorrow they started thinking, speaking and acting, even though they were letting it happen, David, understand this, David didn't allow it. David said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget what? None 
of his ministry. Yeah. Point number two, they that did not allow his soul to become consumed with sorrow. Point two, don't allow your soul to become consumed with sorrow. Don't allow it. Don't allow your soul to become consumed with sorrow. Sorrow will come, though. I want you to understand that. None of us is exempt from it. Because you read the first beginning of that verse in verse 6 of uh, first chapter 30, that David was greatly distressed. Sorrow came knocking at his door. But David didn't let it in. So now you're not immune to feeling sorrow in your soul. But you got to do something with it when it comes. See, we had two groups of people. One, which was the majority, let the sorrow in to their heart. I mean, let the sorrow into their soul. What? Sorrow knocked on his door, he went down. And we got to quit being people pleasing. Because all it took was for one to start saying something negative against David about the situation. Then pretty soon, all fall, all fall to you. You got to stop being followers and being leaders. See, leaders lead. Followers are looking for somebody to lead them. You got to know if you're a follower or a leader. Now, in this spiritual sense, you should be a follower of Christ. Right, right. But in this natural sense, you should be a leader. I lead, I'm a follower. And you, if people don't get that, I mean, I do not follow. I do not follow. Because where you're going may not be where I'm going. And where you're going may not be wrong, but it may be wrong for me and right for you. And where I'm going may be right for me, wrong for you. So you stay in your lane, and I stay in my lane. Don't come in my lane. I don't need no help with doing this. Just like you don't need help on you. I don't need no help from you doing me. Yeah. Stay in your life. I got my help comes from the hills. I look yeah. to the hills, not somebody sitting next to me. That's right. I look to the hills. Y'all got to hear that. Yeah. You got to hear that. Because you let people lead you right to prison. Yeah. They lead you right to drugs. They lead you right to fornication. Yeah. They lead you right to the crack house. They lead you to an unsweetened and extended farm. Keep letting yeah. people lead you if you want to. Yeah. Lead you to broke. Yeah. Lead you to Boston and Thomas. Leave you to leave it, or one of them other people home, which are one of them family surprised you, they'll leave you there. Drop you off at the door. And pull off. And pull off. Leave you there, leave you out there to die. You better watch that guy. Don't be that. You're not going to be a follower. A follower of Christ and then a leader of people. Don't be that people leave you. David, look what happened to you. For people, they turn on you. They turn on you. Don't think because everybody does it that it's okay to allow your soul to be consumed with sorrow. Because all the people stay strong in this. So that's what I'm telling you. Don't allow what everybody else is doing to, to be your blueprint. Everybody else, when they want to do something, to blame. Don't act like I'm the only one to blame. You might be. Everybody get frustrated. Everybody do what everybody gonna keep it and let it consume with me. That's right. Now I'm gonna say every time I get frustrated, I can get discouraged, but when it comes, I gotta know how to deal with it. Right. But you ain't gotta keep giving in because your grandma gave me, mama gave me, daddy gave me, cousin gave me, brother gave me. So now every time sorrow or discouragement comes, you give in. Right. You have to learn to some point how to fight. Yeah. Or some or be consumed by it. You got to either learn how to fight or be consumed by it. Now you got to grow up. That takes growing up. This is what the David did. As we look back at our text in Psalms 1, 103, verse 1 and 2, as we wrap this up, we got to understand that we're living in terrible times. You don't understand the times we're living in. You see people are dying every day by the thousand. Nothing like it was once was. And for some of us, we discover that even in unfamiliar times, hardship, Problems, disappointments, trials, and tribulations are no stranger to them. They're no stranger. I just realized that last night, even in the midst of a pandemic, my health issues wasn't a stranger to me. Ain't like my health issues took a break. 
And you go, well, it is a pandemic. I ain't going to bother you until after all was over. Oh, show up and say, well, I'm gonna, uh, this is the best time to pack. What should we do now? The first time that I went to at 2 o'clock in the morning was full. Two o'clock in the morning. I pull up and I, I walked up and then I got to where they do the 10 things. I look, then they can ask me. I said, no, no, not today. Now, I don't think so. It's, it's been like this all day. I mean, at 2 o'clock in the morning, it was, but it was, and see, you have to understand this. It was already so traditional. You can't so traditional in the hospital. That is the way for them. They don't want to turn you around. They can't turn you around. So somebody was so traditional, they would get me everywhere. And I was like, oh my God. I said, not today. So I had to travel further up the road to go to the hospital. So in unfamiliar times, I still found a familiar enemy called pain and hurt and sickness and disease. I still found a familiar friend. While the world is still trying to figure out how to deal with this coronavirus pandemic, there are some folks who've been going through some tough times way before the pandemic ever hit. And for some of us, it's been one thing after another, and the devil is trying to fill your soul with sorrow by trying to convince you that God can't help you in the situation of hope. His plan is to do whatever you, his plan is to use whatever you're going through to deal or be different to torment you until your soul is so full of sorrow that you forget about the benefits that's available to those that serve the Lord. Can I leave you with this? See, with the third point, and I want you to come back with me on Thursday. Come back with me on Thursday as we look at the word of God and Bible study. On Thursday at 7 o'clock, we're going to pick this back up. I want to go over the benefits. I want you to go over the benefits too. I want you to look in your word. I'm going to give you some homework if I can. Go back today. Today. Pray. Get your Bible pray. I don't to read you in the word. And say, Lord, show me the benefits that time. That's a child of God. And I want you to write down all the benefits you find. And then not only write down the sign of sin. I profess the benefits of your life. And then I want you to come back on Thursday at 7 o'clock and let's talk about it. You share some of your benefits that you found out, I share some of mine, because we may have different ones that we can put them all together and make a great benefit plan for the kingdom for everybody. Can we do that? Amen. Can we do that? Amen. We're kind of going to do a point three. Not just when everything is going good that David blessed the Lord with his own, but he did it more so when things were going bad. And not just half hearted either. But David did it with all their sins. I want to tell you before I leave you that some situations, because of the severity of it, would take all their sins to bless the Holy Man. Some things you go through, it's easy to bless your faith. It would be some things that will happen in your life that will take the wind out of you. It's the thing that will take your very breath away. And at those times, you're going to have to be able to bless the Lord with all that's in you. But see, everything in you will have to be on you in order to get the picture. So I'm going to leave you with this third point. Point number one was don't forget the benefits of serving the Lord when faced with adversity. Point number two, don't allow the soul to become consumed with sorrow. Final point, be prepared to push. Tell somebody to be prepared to push. Push, praise, until something happens. Be prepared. Some situations you won't have to push. You gotta push. You gotta push to something happens. Something has to break. Something. 
block right now and you say, I need to push. I need to praise until something happens. What better chance than right now? You don't know the Lord. That's a great place to start right now, right where you're at. Listen, you have to be perfect, man, in front of the Lord. Any one of you that have heard my story, you know, when God called me was the worst there was. He didn't look for me and wait for me to get cleaned up. He came to me just like I was. And he cleaned me up. And he's still doing it. And what he did for me, the same thing with you, where you find yourself at right now, all you have to do is that small voice that's calling you down, that not that small knock you near from the door of your heart, it's him. Say, let me in. Let me into your life. Quit blocking me out. Quit running from me. Run to me now. You know, try everything else you can do. And nothing is worth it. Now try the Lord. And watch him work. You can accept Jesus Christ right now as the Lord and save you. It's simple, right where you're at. Just say, Lord, I, I want to give you my life. Take it and make it what you want it to be. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and burn joy in me. I messed up, but I want to get it right with you. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sins. I believe. And God raised him on the third day for my justification. And I believe in all my heart that he's seated at the right hand of God right now, praying for me. I want that. I want a better life. I want a better life for me. I want it for my family. I want it for my children. I want it for my community. Lord, God, help me. But I need your help. So I need the Holy Spirit to come back to my life. Show me how to live this life of God. That every time I do a great glory to his name. And I'll be so careful to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. If you pray that prayer, then we want to hear from you. If you pray that prayer right now, we want to hear from you. The church door is open for you to come to know the Lord. That is it's open for you to join us by virtual uh, fellowship if you'd like to join us. The set free ministry, you want to do it um, through our live stream, it's open. We will accept you just as you are, whatever city or state you're in. We can have a fellowship with you. We will call you. We got a virtual class for you to get to help you to know God, know God, serve God. Um, we have weekly meetings. We can still fellowship with you no matter what city or state you are in. You would like to join the church, be a part of this dynamic ministry. You give us a call at 803 447 3854. Someone is waiting to talk to you now. 803 447 3854. Talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. We love you. We thank you. Joining us again. Thank you again for making two church clubs home today to worship the Lord again. Remember to bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is in me, bless his holy name. And forget not all things benefits. God bless you. But the kingdom has benefits.